Okay, so today I am to, I'm going to be doing the shift lab for you. This is on page 60 of your lab book. If you don't have your lab book, that's fine because you probably have the Google Doc and on the Google Doc you should see a table that looks like this. So as we're doing this lab, you are going to fill out this table. This column is for your observations. This column is for whether there are more products or reactants. So before I start this lab, this reaction, um, or this lab is about a reaction that is reversible. Okay, so in this specific reaction, when we have reactants, the mixture is going to look pink when I have more reactants. Okay, when I have more products, when I'm forming more products, it's going to look blue. That is what you need to know for this lab. So, I know you don't have the directions, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing. Right now I have a beaker of ethanol. And I have this um, plastic container filled with cobalt chloride. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of a purple, rocky looking solid. So you need to write down your observations about solid cobalt chloride right here. So something about purple pebbles or something. Okay, now I'm going to put some of it into the ethanol and stir it up. Okay, so here's my stir rod. I'm going to stir it up. Now as you can see, it's turning a nice deep blue. So you need to record your observations about this on the second row where it says cobalt chloride in alcohol because what I'm dissolving it in right now is alcohol. Okay, I'm just trying to get most of the powder mixed in. If I don't get all of it, that's okay. Okay, so go ahead and record any observations that you have about that. solution. So I'm going to divide this into these five small vials. Okay, and I'm trying to do this quickly. So I'm going to try and make these as even as I can, but and I'm kind of making a mess. But that's why we have a paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to add a little more to a couple of these. All right, so now we have five bottles with cobalt chloride in them. I am now going to add some distilled water to each of these. So this is what you need to write down some observations for in the third column. So notice, okay, so I just added five drops of water. You can see the bottom of this little vial is now turning pink. So I'm going to put the lid on, shake it up a little bit. Now we've got a, a nice purple shade. Okay, I'm going to do that to all of the bottles. So I've just added water to all of them. Okay, so again, you can't see there's blue and then I've got pink at the bottom.
Okay, and I'm actually going to add a little bit more water to these ones so that they're more of a purple shade. Now you'll notice as I'm adding water and they're turning pink, I told you pink is the color you get when you have more reactants. So we, you can record then in the second column that adding water makes it so that you have more reactants. So you can put reactants in the second column with water. All right, so what I'm going to do now is each of these bottles I'm going to do something different to. So I'm going to take this bottle, notice it's a nice pinkish purple color. I'm going to go over to the hood and add some hydrochloric acid to it, and we'll see what happens. So just wait for me here and I will be right back. Okay, so you can see that it's now turned blue. Okay, so it went from purple to blue. Because it turned blue, we know that it formed products. It formed more product. So next to hydrochloric acid, you can write it turned blue, formed more product. I'm going to wash my hands off because they're a little wet, and I don't know what's on them. Next, I'm going to add some calcium chloride, some CaCl2. And what this is going to do is it's going to add Cl- to my system. So I'm going to take some of this calcium chloride. This is a white, uh, white pebbles, basically. Okay, so I've just dumped some in there. Now you can see at the bottom, around those pebbles, it's turning blue. And then as I shake this up, the whole mixture is turning a nice bright blue color. Okay, so adding CaCl2 makes this turn blue. Okay, now I'm going to add acetone. So, kind of almost out of acetone here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's making it a little bit blue right there at the top as I'm adding the acetone, which you might expect knowing what everything else has been doing. Okay, so acetone makes our solution turn blue also. Okay, so we've got a nice blue solution with acetone. So go ahead and record that. Now, since they all turned blue, we know that they are forming more products. So that's what you need to record in the table. Lastly, I'm going to add some hydrochloric, or not hydrochloric acid, sorry, some silver nitrate. So this one is really cool, so I'm going to come up here, so hopefully so you can see it. Okay, so we're getting a, a cloudy precipitate, and you can see that it is definitely turning pink. So that means that adding silver nitrate shifts us toward the reactants. So it's forming more reactants right now. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more water to the beaker. So let's get my water here. I'm going to add this to the beaker. I'm going to stir it up a little bit. I want my beaker to be purple. It's not purple yet. Okay, so now I've got a sort of purple pink color. Now I don't know if our hot plate is hot enough for this to work, but we're going to go over here to the hot plate and we're going to put this beaker on the hot plate and see what happens. Got our beaker on the hot plate now. I don't know if you can see. We've got a very dramatic color change going on. Okay, our solution just turned blue. 
All right, so you can record that heating the solution turns it blue. Now, I don't have an ice bath right now because it's after school and I haven't gotten one, but if I were to put this on ice, you might be able to guess it would go back to pink color. So you can record that in your data table. Okay, now finally, I just wanted to help you a little bit on the questions. So this is the end of the actual experiment, and you just need to answer a few questions. So, okay, so you need to complete these sentences on number one. So it says, adding a reactant causes the equilibrium to shift, and then you have to decide whether it's to the reactants or to the products. Okay, so the reactants are the things on the left side of the equation. So heat, this, and this. So let's see if in our data, if we ever added one of these. Well.